in religious garb, just walking the streets one in the afternoon. Bottle caps thrown at Jewish mom from mosque, NYPD says, no hate crime. It wasn't a hate crime. Arabs can't commit a hate crime. Only white males with blonde uh, hair and blue eyes can commit hate crimes to the psychopathic world that we're living in. So look, we have a problem on our hands because you know and I know this is the last election we're going to have in this country where anything matters. Either Trump wins or I would say any conservative light wins. The only one who I would not vote for, I'm going to sit out the election. If Rubio is the choice, I don't vote. He is no different than Hillary Clinton. Rubio is a, is a creation. Rubio is a, Rubio is a fiction. Rubio is an ice cream bar created by Sheldon Adelson and uh, the guy who owns uh, uh, Larry Ellison. They found this guy, young, allegedly good-looking, if that's your type, with an O at the end of his name, Hispanic. Uh, that was it. And they created him. He's a creation. He's a total open borders guy. I don't know anything about him that is uh, at all appealing. He's too lightweight to be a president. But then after Obama, anybody would do. But if Rubio's the choice, I personally am not voting. I'm not voting at all. I'm sending the election out. I'm not voting for open borders. Wouldn't live with myself. It's that simple. N'importe où Deus de monde. And I don't know where that is, for those of you who speak, speak the, Frank, the French lingo. 1994, I said it. Republicrat, Democrat, one-party system, oligarchy. All my terms and phrases articulated in every one of my books, and most particularly now in my new book, Government Zero. Black Lives Leader defends looting in a Yale lecture. We are living in such a debased society that a street vermin called a Black Lives Leader, a street vermin, a rat, a street rat from Black Lives Matter, whatever that means, was invited to teach at Yale as a guest lecturer. Could you imagine what's happened to our universities, that they take street scum and turn them into lecturers? This is right out of Mao Zedong's China, where they took garbage and turned them into heroes, and took heroes and turned them into garbage. So they take the street rat from Black Lives Matter, and he's teaching at Yale, and he gives an article and a speech in defense of looting. Teaching at Yale in defense of looting. And you should see the white teachers who hired him. All of those useless putzes with their legs crossed. All those sheeple men. Oh, 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 look at the, look at the black activist. Oh, yes, yes, black activist. Yes, looting. Yes, we believe in looting. Yes, yes, that's a, that's a thing. They, yeah, yeah, that's a way to get even with society. Yes, 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 yeah. That's the society you're living in. That's your society. I'm not going to blame Barack Obama for it. But he is a symptom of the very same thing. That's how a non-entity like him could have been elected to the, to the presidency to begin with. Who was he? Who was this guy? Nobody. He never even showed up in Congress. He was too lazy to show up in Congress when he was a senator. But you made him president. Why? Because you're a white, guilty person. I mean, you'd expect people of color to vote for him, right? Why would people not vet a man like him? And look where we are seven years later. Take a look at it. Take a look at this. So now it gets even better. Uh, your president goes on CBS News with Steve Croft, who's perhaps the last newsman left in television journalism, and he gets angry at Steve Croft because Steve Croft dare challenge him by saying the world is getting more unstable under this unstable president of ours. So Steve Croft catches him in his weakness. As I said to you a thousand times, maybe you'll hear me now. Teddy Roosevelt said, talk softly and carry a big stick. Obama's reversed it. Talk loudly and carry a broken limp stick. So now one reporter has the guts to stand up to this fraud, this psychopath in the White House. And he says, let me ask you a question. When he knows the whole world's laughing at him behind his back, but actually he doesn't know the world's laughing at him behind his back because he is protected by barrier after barrier of sorority girls who doesn't even, they don't even let him know what the world is snickering at him behind his back. They see him as a weak and effectual leader. The only guts he has is to attack the American people. The only guts he has to attack the Republican Party, which doesn't even exist. But when it comes to real world leaders on the real stage, Putin made him look like a chump. Putin made your president look like the chump he has always been. You know, you're listening to not a man talking to himself, but a very important man. You're listening to the number one streaming radio show in the United States of America. That is talk radio show with a, an astounding, unprecedented 27 share. You can dismiss it if you want, but dismiss it at your own expense because you'll be lying only to yourself. No one's ever seen numbers like this before. 
and a streaming radio show indicates that a younger audience is listening to this show. The very audience that everybody in the radio business covets is tuning into this show on the internet, on Android devices, on iPhones, whatever they may be. And the only comparison is old Rush Limbaugh at a 13.7 share. I don't do that to denigrate him, but I'm in a very competitive business. And I'm winning. And you gotta know I'm winning. And there's a reason you gotta know I'm winning. Because my message is resonating with America. My message is resonating with the young Americans. My message is getting out there. So don't think you're alone. You see, the way the radical left works is they want to marginalize you, not only societally, but in your own head. They want you to believe that you're a little crazy. They want you to believe that your own thoughts are out of step with the real America. But you are the real America. They are the criminals who have hijacked the nation. They have stolen the nation right out from under our feet like Houdini. Like out of a hat, they stole it from us. They stole it from us when we're the power. We are the people. We're the workers. We're the taxpayers. Not Black Lives Matter. Not people who burn and loot and shoot police. They're the refuse of society. The rubbish of society burns and loots. But the country is so upside down that they invite the leader of this refuse to teach at Yale University and he gives a lecture on how, why looting is justified and it's a victimless crime. Tell that to the Korean whose store got burned down. Tell that to the black lady whose beauty parlor was set on fire. On that pleasant note, I'll take a break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I hope that there's a little bit of a fight tonight. You know, I doubt it. It's all been rigged. And, you know, if you think I'm saying it, that I'm a right-wing conspiracy guy, one of the candidates on the stage tonight, Mar uh, Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley, has repeatedly denounced the debate schedule as rigged. He's accused the DNC of tilting the process in favor of you-know-who, Hillary Clinton. Of course that's what it is. And the other guy on the stage, Bernie Sanders, the commie, has been less strident in his criticism. But even the commie has said Democrats are dead wrong to limit the number of debates. The communists said, I think this country benefits, all people benefit, democracy benefits when we have debates. And I want to see more of them, Santa said in August. I think that debates are a good thing. But Wasserwoman Schultz, one of the meanest people in the history of American politics, one of the worst women to ever walked on the political stage, is like a fascist dictator. dictator. She has limited the debate. She's limited the number of people on the stage. She locked out an up-and-coming Democrat called Gabbard, who has vocally criticized Obama's strategy against the Islamic State in Iraq, because Gabbard is a war veteran. That's why this communist socialist hag from Brooklyn won't let her talk. How can you as a Democrat have any faith in your party? When even those in the Democrat Party who have some scintilla of self-respect know that this is a stooge right out of the Soviet Union. And you let a woman like Vasa woman Schultz take over your party? That's, that's the face of the party? That's a big tent in your idea? That's a big tent. You know, I've been tweeting during the show, and here are the three tweets that have been sent out. Michael Savage says, The Hip Hop Awards will outdraw the Democratic debate tonight, 3 to 1. Michael Savage tweeted today, Bernie Sanders is a Trojan horse for Hillary. He's been selected to make her look centrist. <clears throat> Michael Savage tweeted the following, A president I respected, Eisenhower, was a war hero. I felt safe in America. Do you actually feel safe with Obama in office? So look forward to me tweeting, live tweeting during tonight's debates. I figure what's good for Trump is good for, <laughs> is good for me. Because, I mean, I'm going to sit through it. I have a large audience. I have a fairly large Twitter or Facebook following. And I don't have a radio show. But this is a wonderful thing to do. You make no money. There's no ads. But at least I'll get my opinions out. I mean, the first thing I'll probably tweet on is on Bernie Sanders' suit. The first thing I'm going to look at and see if it's used or new, if he bought it at Bloomingdale's on, on uh, you know, on sale, or he had it pressed and cleaned. I don't know. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hillary will be in a pink pants suit, no doubt, that nobody will see. She'll be the pink panther. And O'Malley, I genuinely don't know who he is. I know he exercises a lot. That's all I know. I don't know anything about him. He's the governor of Maryland. That should tell you everything you need to know. That's the place where Baltimore was burned to the ground, and he did nothing. Another great leader. Baltimore was burning, and O'Malley wasn't there. End of story. Another great leader. 
So I asked you today, what questions would you like to ask Bernie, the commie, Sanders, and Clinton? What do you think of Anderson Blooper? Take a quick caller in the remaining two minutes of the show. Raymond on KBOI, fire away. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I just wanted to comment. I love it when you talk about your brother as the father of a handicapped son myself. That man has taught me volumes. You're right. And I don't want to go on and on because people who do not have a handicapped individual in their lives or did never had one will not understand this. Life is so cheap in America today that people who are less than perfect are dismissed as useless. But I have said to you, my audience, and to my family itself, that no, I'm not sad when I think about my silent brother who died too young, who never spoke a word. I don't think he ever saw a sunrise or a sunset. How sad that is. And died in an institution. He taught me how to speak to, uh, to animals and how to communicate with the silent animals, audiences. I can speak to leaves, and I think in that sense, he was the greatest teacher I ever had. And anyone who has a handicapped person in their life understands the struggle it is, and also that there are rewards. Unfortunately, the progressives in this society have dismissed people who are less than perfect as wasted members of society. And Jerry Brown should be ashamed of himself through eternity of having written in the suicide law, because as sure as I am sitting in here, standing here right now in front of this microphone, in time, not tomorrow, in time, this assisted suicide law that Jerry Brown, the great progressive, wrote into law the other night will be used to force euthanasia upon the less than perfect in our society. And on those sad notes, I invite you to not watch this progressive Islamist debate tonight. Nothing will be true. Nothing will touch reality. But what do you expect from a man as empty as Anderson Cooper? This is Michael Savage saying God bless America and thank you for listening. I'll be back tomorrow right here on your local station.